So um, in issues like Roe v. Wade and um, other similarly very divisive topics, um, a common issue that comes up is a, that it is simply a ideological difference between you know person A and person B. You believe that life begins at conception. Somebody might believe it begins at a heartbeat. Whatever. Um, how, in general, at all, in general, but also in a political environment, do you approach people that have those different ideological standpoints and? attempt to resolve them? So I have, uh, one of the things that I, I've done since my first campaign is if any, if anybody ever asks to be with me, I go. Whether it's a Republican, a Democrat, someone I know, I will never win their vote regardless of, of whatever I say, um, I go. Because I think that there's value in having conversations with people who disagree with you, even if you ultimately aren't going to end up uh, on the same page. Just having the conversation maybe broadening out your perspective, perhaps broadening out the other person's perspective is always a good thing to do. Um, I, I do that all the time with my House colleagues. So where I sit on the House floor, I'm in the last row of Republicans on the House floor. I'm, I'm surrounded by Democrats, and I'm glad of that. I think it's great. I hope I don't move next year, because um, we've been able to develop some extremely good relationships and work together on a lot of issues, I, I probably vote yes on more Democrat amendments than any other Republican in the House. I can't think of anyone who votes yes on more Democrat amendments than I do. Um, and for me, it's when, when I'm trying to legislate, it's trying to make the best decision that I can based on the facts and data that I have in front of me. And sometimes those facts and data do not support my philosophical or ideological views. So when I see that, and I look at that and think, yeah, we're wrong on this one, or you know the party line is wrong on this one, then I'm willing to buck the party line. I, I wish we had more of that. Um, I think you're, you're probably your you're better representatives um, to, to more adequately and fully represent their constituents who aren't all Democrats or all Republicans um, need to do more of that. But that's something that I've tried to do in my time in the House. I'm gonna continue doing that going forward. Every bill that I've ever passed out of the House and. Um, yeah, just every bill I've had passed out of the House has been supported with, uh, with bipartisan support. And it's because of that reason, going to the minority party, trying to get some buy-in. This past session, um, I was working with some folks across the aisle who uh, trying to get some support on one of my bills. And it was great. We were able to work together. And, um, and, and afterwards, she said, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that you've done this. You're the first Republican who's ever come to me in my time in the House to ask for my in input on anything and work on anything together. So that was shocking and frustrating to me. But I think um, that's, that's something that I've tried to do in my two years. I'm going to do it as long as I'm in the legislature because I, I don't think we have the corner on the market on good ideas. I think there's a lot of good ideas in that room, but you aren't going to find out unless you talk to people. So expanding on that, um, that the, the woman that you were talking to, um, I've already forgotten her name. I didn't tell you what her name was, but she's running uh, She's running for Congress in the uh, St. Louis area now, actually. So um, she indicated that it is, you know, you're the first yeah. Republican that has come and actually discussed these things with her. Um, do you think it is then a problem of uh, people not being willing to, to communicate enough, of uh, people not willing to exchange those idea enough, ideas enough? Yeah, I, I, I certainly think that's a problem. I also think that it, it requires a lot of work that a lot of people don't feel is necessary given where Missouri is politically right now and given where the, the numbers that are currently in existence in the legislature like to be honest, you don't need Democrats to pass anything. Uh, anything super partisan, I guess I would say. Like if, it, if it's one of those, you know, hardcore red versus hardcore blue issues, you know, you, it, it's kind of a waste of time for, at least in some people's minds, to go over to the other side and, and try and have conversations so they don't do it. Um, but I, I just don't think that's good representation, and I think you're missing out on a lot of valuable resources when you don't pick the brains of everybody in the room to try and get the best product that you can put forward. <coughs> What else? Yeah. So looking at the redistricting lines from uh, after before 2020 and after 2020, 
Like yeah. you notice that they go from something that's at least fairly followable to something that was just up on the screen and then you know it's kind of all over the place with lots of little breaths out. Yeah. Just kind of a mess. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So the redistricting process, so I'll talk about the state house and senate redistricting process first. So the way it works in Missouri is you have a panel of equal number of Democrats, equal number of Republicans, who are all supposed to work together to draw your house, your state house and state senate district maps. And if they can't come to some kind of agreement, then the, uh, then the map will go to the courts for a group of appellate judges to then draw the maps. So um, we have this year, uh, in, on the House side anyway, that panel was able to agree on a map, which hasn't happened in, in a very long time. So the, uh, the Republicans were happy because um, there were a lot of competitive seats, and the Democrats were happy because there were more competitive seats than there have been in the past, just based on how they drew the lines. Um, but the, the way the lines are drawn are weird. You're trying to find 38,000 people, and uh, you know my district is odd because it's sort of a lot of the little squiggles are um, city limit lines. So they're trying to keep communities of interest together. So if you have you know cities, they try and keep those together as much as you can. If you have school districts, they try and keep those together as much as you can. So the lines always look weird, but it's not necessarily because there's something weird and nefarious going on. Sometimes there is. But um, especially with our house maps, with the, with the bipartisan way that they were able to work together, I don't think that there's anything real weird that happened with those. It just, they take into account some, some natural features and some, you know, some human drawn features like city lines and county lines and things like that that, that sometimes result in weird little squiggles here and there. Any more questions? Let me bring us home with one more question, a good one to end on from Jared Henry. Uh, Jared asked, um, what has living in the Missouri area your whole life taught you about Missouri values and more broadly American values? That's a great question. And I, I think probably I, I learned most about that when I was knocking doors, especially last cycle. I'm knocking doors certainly this cycle too, but my seat has moved a lot more or a lot less competitive than it was last time. Last time I was in a, in a very competitive race, probably less competitive, at least based on the demographic breakdown this year. But one, but I, I knocked on every door. You know, there are certain folks that only knock on certain doors, but I knocked on every door. And one of the things that always struck me is even when you we were having conversations with someone who didn't think the same way as you, the vast majority of the time, in Missouri and in Springfield, they were good civil conversations. And I don't know that we see that um, across the board everywhere else. And I, that, that, that was one of the things I think, you know, I've always been proud to be from Missouri, proud to be from Springfield, but I think that was one of those things that made me even more proud. You know, there were, there were only a handful of times where I got cussed out and thrown off somebody's porch sort of thing. Every other time it was always a good civil conversation. And I think that just speaks to the, the the decency that we have here in Missouri as humans toward each other, where we can say, okay, you know, I disagree with everything you have to say, but you're still a human and you still have value, and I, I you know, have some respect for you for that reason. So, um, I, I think I think that's one of the big takeaways is, you know, the when you when you look at what's going on on social media, when you look at what's going on on the national news, it looks really bleak. It looks like everyone's just at each other's throats all the time. But then when you're actually talking to people face to face on their front porches, um, I think most people are really good, decent humans that just have disagreements sometimes on policy. So um, it, it, it's, uh, it's, more, it's more positive, I think, than uh, what it looks when you're just kind of looking at it from a 10,000 foot view. So uh, I will just say, just on a personal note, you are one of the most responsive people Thank I know you. when I reach out. I don't mean like responsive representatives. You, you will call me back before my mom does, just FYI. <laughs> so I, I just mentioned that because if I want to follow up with you based on conversations we've had in class today or if I live in your district and something crosses me, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, so um, I always have people say I'm crazy for doing this, but you can call me on my personal cell phone anytime. Oh. My number is 417-860-7555. Don't hesitate to call. If you call me, I will call you back. If you text me, I will text you back. Um, you know, use, use that and uh, 
don't hesitate to use it. If you if you think I'm if you think I've done something stupid, feel free to call me and tell me. If you think I've done something cool, you know sometimes it's nice to get an old an attaboy every once in a while too. Um, or if you have something you want to want me to see, happy to do that. One of the things that we as reps do a lot that doesn't get as much attention is we do a lot of like constituent services work. So if you're having issues with some some government department who's you know not doing what you need them to do call your rep, whether it's me or, or any of the other reps in Springfield, I'll do a pretty good job. And if you say, hey, I'm having this issue with the department, we have weird ways to be able to get results for you very quickly. So that's something that um, is always an option too. But yeah, call me on my cell phone. If, if you don't like to call or text, my, you know, my email is up on, online. I have a number of different email addresses. You can find those online easily and send me emails at any of those. That's fine. But how, you know, if you want to call, you've got the info. Feel free to use it. All right. A round of applause. Thank you so much, sir.